Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a good video for you today. The video today is gonna about, be about mental health in prison and post-prison. You know, I suffer from depression. I suffer from a few things and First of all, my last video, it was, it was a bad video. And it was a bad video because I, I drank too much, I'll be honest. I gotta be straight up honest and everything. And, and I'm gonna talk about that this today and, and why and what you guys should look for from, from your own people. Before I get started, please check me out on YouTube member programs, Patreon, Discord. Check merch out, please. Gangster Redemption is doing very well. People are learning a lot and that makes me feel good. The cigar, the Crooked Diamond Cigar, Launch was great. We're gonna be talking about that. Coming months, we, we, we announced the winner named Paul Laddie from Atlanta. Uh, he gave us all this information, so everything is finalized with him. So he is, him and his girlfriend, I guess, are gonna be going on the cruise with us in November. So let me get back into this video and I'll tell you why. My last video came out Thursday and you know, my team wanted to take it down. They said that, you know, my son says, dad, you know, that that's, you know, it was terrible, you were fucked up, and, and he's right. And, uh, but I really thought long and hard about taking it down. And, uh, you know, I didn't take it down because I wanted to show people that I'm human, I'm normal. Uh, I suffer from things just like you do out there and all of us do. I think everybody here in this planet suffers from something. And I think every one of us here on this planet got to just realize we can get better or we can become better for it. Yes, my biggest probably issue is not drugs or stuff. I control it usually. And I didn't drive that night just to let everybody know. I did have a few too many. Obviously, I think that was pretty obvious. I went back and looked at that video and it kind of hurt me, you know, hurt me inside that I, I got myself like that. And, it, and, you know, I was battling a little bit of a depression. And uh, the, one, the one drug I can't do, and it really affects me the worst, is alcohol. And it's funny because uh, Ben's and I and uh, Dr. Filiberto, we discussed drugs on one of our shows on the podcast, and we're gonna do that some more. And in my case, I believe, and I still will believe this always, that alcohol affects people uh, the worst. It, it sure does me. Now, everybody's different. I don't want anybody to think that taking any drug is good in any sense, uh, form. Anything that alters you from who you're not is dangerous. Listen, it's not about doing drugs. I enjoy them. I, I, I sometimes needed them to get away. Sometimes acid helped me. And I know that sounds crazy. And they're using now acid in a lot of psychological tests for PTSD. And, you know, I went into a lot of why I still face depression. Why, you know, as things go good and, and life is pretty good. And I think I handle life pretty good. Why am I getting depressed? Here I am, I'm doing good. I'm on a big weight loss kick. I, I dropped 45 pounds and I feel great. I mean, I really do. So now it's the working out phase and, and getting back in shape the way I used to be. You know, I, I look at it like the, 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 the memories sometimes come back to me. Things hit me that, that, that fucking hurt, man. And you know, some guys I know, friends I know who are dead. You know, I often talk about these things and I try to talk about these things, obviously, Part of it's for my own therapy, but part of it is because I don't want to see anybody go to that fucked up place we call prison. There's nothing positive about prison, everybody. There's nothing positive about prison. I, I don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here saying I didn't deserve to go to prison. You all know I, I did, and I mean that, and, and I'm not one of these people who complain about that. I am who I am. We all make our choices and we have to live with them. Sadly, did I know I'd be living with these, these decisions for the rest of my life? I know what people are gonna say. And, and, and believe me, as a man who, who, who analyzes things very well, I look at it this way. What about the people who I harmed? And I don't mean physically harmed because I didn't hurt anybody in a robbery or anything of that nature, physically. But I did hurt them mentally. And I think about that too for whatever issues they might have right now. And, and, and I wanna feel for them. And I do feel for them. I got to get over my fucking shit. I got to get over it. I have to beat it. I have to fucking become better for it. And I have to try to educate people. And I have to try to fix our prison systems. And I, that, that is my function in life. I'm not a young kid anymore. And as not a young kid, I want people to know that, you know, nothing is the end. I went through a whole fucking thing the other day. And I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say feeling sorry for myself because I don't do that. I was just in a bad place. I, I don't know. My head was thing, you know. There's a lot on my mind. There's a lot of people on my mind. I fucking had too much to drink. And then I did a video. 
and uh, I, I made one bad choice after another. I want to thank my team for all wanting to protect me, every one of them, from uh, Darian to, to Benz, to every one of them wanted to protect me, say take it down. I, I didn't want to take it down because, I, again, if there's one thing you're going to get out of me, it's the real deal. Whether it's a podcast or a video, I don't have to bullshit. I, I don't bullshit. I, I don't lie to you guys. I fucking tell it like it is. Sometimes to the detriment of myself and uh, some other people, and corporate people and big time people would have said to me, listen, you can't do something like that. Well, you know what? We all make our own fucking decisions. I, I made a bad decision and uh, I, I'm glad I didn't drive. If that, you know, that's the one part I always think about I'm pretty good about that I don't want to drive being intoxicated of course because there's so many ramifications to that and it's again hurting somebody else and everything else that goes along with that not the DUI that I could get but it really hit me hard uh, talking about drugs and alcohol and in that one video or one podcast I did with Dr. Filiberto and myself and, and Ben so we've been talking about it and uh in fact, tomorrow, Dr. Filiberto is filling in for Ben, who's on vacation. So he's going to be in my seat. I'm going to be actually at the board in the show, of course. And then uh, we're going to have my brother. So we're going to have a lot of fun with Dr. Filiberto. We're going to get into this a little bit more because he's such a smart guy. And it'll be just the three of us and whoever else pops in on here, uh, us on the couch, which, you know, like I said, if you're ever in the area and you want to come to a filming, come on in. You know, uh, contact us and tell me in the area and you can sit in on, on a filming it happens on Mondays and Fridays. On this video, I really wanted to go into a little bit of mental health and yeah, I had my issue and uh, hopefully that's done. I actually had a lot of nice comments. Some people said, Larry, get that help you need. Uh, one was a doctor actually said that and he's right, you know, and when I read that one, I think that's the one that really kind of says, hey man, get a hold of yourself. You know, you're not a kid anymore. Uh, I'm an old man. I hate to say, oh man, I don't feel old. But I like to have fun, and I'm not going to stop having fun, but I have to be more responsible. And mainly, yeah, you can get fucked up in life. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't do stupid things after it. Obviously, I didn't drive, but don't go do a video. Don't do uh, certain things. Make sure you respect other people. Make sure you still do the things you're supposed to do. You know, when the one thing I'm going to say is all the, the stuff I've done in my life, I don't let it affect my work. And, uh, you know, people say, oh, that's just a functioning alcoholic or that's a functioning drug addict. No, 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 hold on. I'm a workaholic. Probably that's my biggest issue, I think. I also am a person who uh, believes that you have to unwind. You have to, you can't live one all day. I am a, a kind of person that goes at it hard, whatever it is. Whether it's fun, whether it's uh, work, whatever it is, I go at it hard. Like, listen, I'm going on a cruise with everybody. I don't know if you, you signed up for the cruise. If you haven't, please come on on with us. November 18th to November 21st, just a carnival cruise lines right here out of Port Canaveral, Florida. It's a weekend cruise. One of the fans won one, and we got myself and Benz and Darian and the team going on it, and we're gonna have a lot of fun on that cruise. Um, my brother's gonna be on it as well. So we got a four of us and then and then some other fans and we're gonna have a lot of fun on this cruise because I do like to unwind I do like to have fun I do like to you know get into it and, and and now I'm on an environment where I can do that where there's no driving there's nothing of that nature I don't get violent when I get on drunk drinking or uh, drugs or I don't get violent I get happy again I, I made the bad choice by putting a video up that was my bad choice and you know I I don't know if it's a bad or good choice by leaving it up but it is who I am and I'm not gonna start, you know, lying to you guys who I am. I'm, I'm, I am, I'm a human being who makes mistakes. I'm a human being who fucking deals with depression. I'm a human being who deals with uh, anxiety issues sometimes. You know, I started doing a little research just the other day on this, but yesterday actually, after, after the comment, the video came up, so last night I was like feeling bad about things. And I decided to do some research from the National Library of Medicine, the mental and physical health problems as conditions of ex-prisoner re-entries. Many former prisoners suffer from a mental health issues. A report by the House of Commons, this is from Britain, reveals a high prevalence among male and female prisoners of such issues as psychotic disorder, seven to 14 percent, respectively, anxiety, 21 and 32 percent, depression, 33 and 51 percent, and personality disorders, 64 to 50 and 50 percent, that's male and female, have to deal with. I mean, this is how prevalent mental health conditions are of former prisoners. 
And I always try to tell you, if you're a former prisoner, you know, that we have to get through these things. You have to find the support that you're gonna need. I'm lucky to have a very supportive uh, family, very supportive children, very supportive friends, and even you guys, all you guys, everybody on this channel who has mentioned things positively to me. And you know, said, Larry, you, you seem fucked up, you know? And, and you were right, you know? I can't lie, so it's pretty easily uh, uh, see. I look back at that and I, man, I understand why my guys wanted to take it down, but I also don't wanna fucking lie to you guys. I had an issue there, I had some depression going on in my life, and, uh, and, and you get over it. You know, you get over that kind of shit all the time. You know, you got to fight through stuff. That's what it is. And I do, and I hope you do too. Everybody goes through it. Everybody goes through it. Don't think, you know, you're alone. If you're doing things and you're going through shit, don't think you're going through it alone. Because you're not. There are people. Let me let me give you some, some more stuff. Prison Policy Initiative. This is a, another one from America. And they're talking about... Uh, mental health issues from prisoners and stuff. And they say, we often talk about the disturbingly high numbers of people with mental health disorders locked up in prisons and jails. But less attention is paid to the ways in which incarceration itself perpetuates this problem by creating and worsening symptoms of mental health, mental illness. Research shows that while it varies from person to person, incarceration is linked to mood disorders, including major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder. You know, depressive disorder is, is something that I do have, uh, and, and I have to fight through that. And I, I do fight through it, I think, uh, for the most part. My, my fighting through things is by, I become a workaholic, and we all handle our problems in one way or the other, and, and I want you to hope. Hopefully you handle yours the same way. Many of the defining features of incarceration are linked to negative mental health outcomes, including disconnection from family, loss of anatomy, boredom and lack of purpose, and unpredictability of surroundings. Professor Greg Haney, an expert on psychological effects of imprisonment and prison isolation explains, at the very least, prison is painful and incarcerate, incarcerated persons often suffer long-term consequences from having been subjected to pain, deprivation, and extremely atypical patterns of norms of living and interacting with others. And as Dr. Seymour L. Halleck has observed, the prison environment is almost diabolically conceived to force the offender to experience the pangs of what many psychiatrists would describe as mental illness. You know, what Dr. Filiberto said the other day on our podcast, and if you haven't heard the discussion on drugs, is we can help more people by taking the money we could save on this bullshit incarceration. Because what he mentioned was, we are incarcerating people and we are feeling the long-term effects of incarceration for decades to come. Look at me, I've been out of prison for 15 years and I still feel it. Yes, was I in isolation for a long time? Yes. Did I experience more than most? Yes. But so many are doing it as well. And what Dr. Filiberto was saying is mental health is big, big problem we're having right now. And we need to stop this incarcerating people and ruining families and generations and generations after generations uh, on bullshit. I mean, on a mental, mental disorder or a problem that we can fix in a lot better way than we can fix on uh, by throwing people in prison. You can't. Here you go, family disconnections. By its very nature, Incarceration separates people from the social networks and loved ones. In 2018, when researchers at the University of Georgia analyzed the relationship between prison conditions and mental health in 214 state prisons, they found that people incarcerated more than 50 miles from home more likely to experience depression. Wow. When I was in prison, as you know, the prison system kept pushing me farther away from home because I fought the prison system about the deaths of people in prison. By doing that, I didn't realize how much I, I was hurting my own self. But I wouldn't change a thing. You know, I'm a fighter, and, and I'm still going to fight for the people who are in there. I'm going to fight for families. I'm going to fight for the people who need to, don't have a voice. Uh, the more I build my platform, the more I want to help more people incarcerated.
And again, don't for one second think that I'm sitting here saying that what crime you committed was right. Some of these stupid drug crimes is just a joke. It's a fucking joke. And we are a laughing stock of the whole world, the United States, by incarcerating the people we incarcerate. That's why we're so incarcerated. We are the most incarcerated minded nation in the fucking world. And you can debate me anywhere. Anybody who wants to debate me on that, I will fucking gladly do that right here on air. Similarly, in 2015 review of research on the impact of prisons on mental health, separation from family and friends emerged as a major stressor for incarcerated people. It was also associated with psychological distress. In fact, many people describe the, this separation as the most challenging aspect of their incarceration. Dr. Gomi and Dickinson, who authored the review, found that even when incarcerated people receive visits from family members, the prison environment makes it harder for them to connect. Correctional facilities are built and operated around the goal of security. And these regulations and security measures inevitably impact on relationship between prisoners, their families, and children. Absolutely. When you go into a prison, you can't even hug your kid or you, you can't sit, have, even sit next to them in some facilities. You have to sit across from them just to keep you, you away from people. The loss of an autonomy and lack of purpose. Incarcerated people have virtually no control over their day-to-day -day lives, including when they wake up, what they eat, what their jobs are, and when they have access to recreation. This can lead to feelings of dependence and helplessness. The three main studies included in the Nagumni and Dickinson Review all concluded that this loss of an autonomy harms mental health. Once again, this makes sense. We know people feel better and have better mental health outcomes when they have control over their surroundings. Yes, and then people are going to be saying, then what do we do with people who make, you know, do something so bad? There has to be a balance of people who are going to get out because all you're doing is hurting people. It's all you're doing is causing more criminals. You know, I often used to tell people, they go, do you want a person who has hope? Uh, do you want a person who, who cares about things? Or do you want a person who give a shit? He's got a mental health issue now that's so bad that, that you know, incarcerated, incarceration fucked him up so bad. Do you want that? I hope not. I really do. I hope not. And I look at that in that way. So, similarly, incarceration is often characterized by boredom, monotony, and lack of stimulation. Many incarcerated people have limited access to education, job training, and other programs that fill their time and become a meaningful part of their lives. In a 2003 study of incarcerated people in England, participants reported the lack of activity and mental stimulation leads to extreme stress, anger, and frustration. Some reported using unhealthy coping mechanisms to manage boredom, including substance abuse. In 2018, University of Georgia study mentioned earlier also found that people in in prisons with limited access to work assignments experience high levels of depression. Once again, this fits with psychological research that shows meaningfulness and a lack of purpose can lead to symptoms of anxiety, depression, and hopelessness. Unpredictability. These feelings of anxiety and depression can be exasperated by the unpredictable nature of carceral environment. As the behavioral science and the law article mentioned above explains, there are numerous rules in prison and jails that do not exist in the free world, many of which are ambiguous and only enforced erratically. The authors note that institutional rules are enforced selectively, depending on factors such as inmate-staff relationship, staff members' mood, the severity of the rule violation, and the convenience of rule enforcement. The lack of clarity and predictability can contribute to feelings of uncertainty and stress. I had that. Big time. You never knew what the fuck was coming. I was, I, I was handled differently because I fought the system. That's what it is. Even relative humane prison or jail can contribute to negative mental health conditions for the reasons outlined above. But the reality is that poor conditions in prison and jails cause significant additional suffering and drama, as the World Health Organization explains. There are factors in many prisons that have negative effects on mental health, including overcrowdingness, various forms of violence, enforced solitude or conversely, lack of privacy, lack of meaningful activity, isolation from social networks, insecurity ab about future prospects, work relationships, etc., and inadequate health services, especially mental health services. This list of mentally damaging conditions accurately describes most U.S. jails and prisons. It's not me saying it, guys. Overcrowdingness. All that shit hurts us all. And 
solitary confinement. Let me give you a little bit on solitary confinement. The stress caused by spending time in solitary confinement can lead to permanent changes to people's brains and personalities. I spent three years in the hole. Am I a little mental? Uh, I'm hoping not. Am I a little? Probably. I think everybody is in their own degree. Being put in solitary confinement, which is common practice in many prisons and jails, is especially harmful to mental health. As we discussed in a briefing last year, the stress caused by spending time in solitary confinement can lead to permanent changes in people's brains and personalities, depriving humans who are naturally social beings of the ability to interact with others can cause social pain, which affects the brain in the same way as physical pain. A 2000 study found that people were significantly more likely to develop psychiatric disorders while in solitary confinement than while housed in non-solitary units. And last but not least on this one, trauma from experiencing and witnessing violence, which I've witnessed a ton of it. Brains and jails are extremely violent places. People often experience traumatic verbal and physical assaults and dehumanization, watch this, at the hands of correctional officers. And the various stressors in a carceral environment also increase the chance of violence between incarcerated people. Researchers in a 2009 study found that experiencing violence during incarceration was significantly related to aggressive and antisocial behavior tendencies as well as emotional distress. In fact, even witnessing violence behind the bars can be traumatizing, as we have discussed previously. Exposure to violence in prisons and jails can exasperate existing mental health disorders or even lead to the development of post-traumatic stress syndromes like anxiety, depression, avoidance, hypersensitivity, hypervigilance, suicidality, flashbacks, and difficulty with emotional regulations. And it has lasting effects. Some suggest that trauma people experience behind bars can lead to post-incarceration syndrome, syndrome that shares characteristics with PTSD. I probably have that as well, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna get my help, which I do. I do see a psychiatrist at the VA. I'm gonna uh, give her a call, because when I, when, I, when I run into stuff like this, I, I, I try to work it out with her. She's great. We all need help one way or the other. Uh, I want you to get help if you have some issues, and I don't care if you've been in jail for a day or not even in jail. There's nothing to do. I'm just giving you my take on what it is, or with me. And I want to apologize again for a bad video I did, and, and hope that doesn't happen again. Uh, and if it keeps doing it, I want to thank you all for making comments and, and pushing me in the right direction, because I, I really do feel, I feel the love of the channel. Yes, I have some people say, fuck you, Larry, you should drop dead. I mean, I hear the stupid comments. You can't weigh in on all of them, obviously. But the positive stuff does make me keep going, and I want to keep helping people. And uh, I think I got it together to a degree. I think I had a lot of life experience, and I want to pass that on to you. Uh, and I want to also make sure you're not making the stupid choices that I made when I was your age to get me into this situation. I feel great. I want to again thank you guys. I want to express the love back to you guys. Mental health is serious shit. Make sure you get help if you have, have mental health problems. Make sure of that. I want to wish everybody a great day. Have, a, have fun. Enjoy. Make good choices. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.